How's it going, everybody? Welcome back to Is It A Buy, where we talk about stocks and try to determine if they're with a buy or maybe a pass. My name is Corey. I'd just like to preface the video by saying I'm not a financial advisor. I'm just a guy who likes to talk about stocks, so please take what I say with a grain of salt, all right? Uh, how's it going, everybody? What's up? Happy Monday, Monday, Monday. I am hyped up to be back. Uh, good stuff. Good day. Good weekend. I hope you guys are having a fantastic day. I hope you guys had a great, safe weekend. I hope everybody's doing well. Let's head to the chat. We'll get into what is going on with good old AMC, and then we'll talk about a few other stocks that we are keeping an eye on. Um, uh, and just a few other stuff. Let's let's see what we have going on. Uh, Diane, hello, hello. Hamza, hey bro, what's up? Uh, dog, hello all. Uh, Mama Carrot, <laughs> hola, what's up? Hello, hello. Angelina, hey, welcome. Lee, yo, yo, yo. I'm at my kid's open house. Uh, I'll be <laughs> in later. See you, Lee. Have a good one. Diamond with the super chat. Tomorrow is a Tuesday. Absolutely. It is a Tuesday. You're 100% correct on that one. Man, we will see what happens tomorrow. Uh, beautiful little setup for today. We'll see what happens with tomorrow. Do I have a... We'll, we'll get in here a little more microscopically in a second whenever I look at it. Diane, disclaimer, there are only there are 21 Tuesdays until the end of 2021. We have a countdown going on. Damon Yo from UCF. UCF, the alma mater. Gotta love it. Angelina says, I'm finding myself furious at the dark pools. How can, and how we can win? Yeah, you know... There's a lot of different things going on. I think, honestly, I, I truly, truly, truly believe that everything is already set in motion, okay? Everything is already set in motion. We just need to make sure that everything continues in, you know, we just let, have to let it take its course. And we've seen this. If you ever watch any kind of documentary or whatever with uh, any kind of investigation, uh, usually for like FBI or whatever it would be, then at that point, it's always going to be like, it just takes a long time. Watch anything. There was a, um, a documentary called McMillions, right? In the McMillions documentary, uh, took a lot, like the investigation into what was going on. It was the, the monopoly, uh, McDonald's scandal. If you're not familiar with that is, um, and the monopoly scandal took, years for them to to find the right person and everything it took a long time this is something a little different you know i i wonder how long it takes um enron i'm trying to think of how long enron took you know i'm not saying this is the same kind of caliber of what's going on but what i'm getting at is change takes time i personally am willing to wait for the change and kind of sit tight and hold strong but you know i, I think it's just gonna take a little bit home what's up let's go amc fellow grape eating ape <laughs> mustafa says how can there be 75 million volume if three months ago 80 percent was owned by retailers and now institutional owners 75 million volume if three months ago uh, was that what the volume was today? Yeah, 75 million in volume, but three months. I mean, realistically, I feel like this is kind of like, how do I? I feel like it's kind of plateaued temporarily, right? I don't think it's a dead cat. I don't think it's over. Personally, these are my personal thoughts, making your own financial decisions. I personally don't think it's over or anything like that. I think the hype is kind of, it was there. I think the hype still is there, but I think the hype has kind of died down from mainstream, right? And whenever the stock eventually, based on what I'm seeing with the short interest numbers, uh, and the utilization, all that good stuff that we look at in Ortex that we'll take a look at in a second. Based on those numbers, I think that there is going to be uh, a movement. Angel, yo, what's up? Uh, Enron took a bit, good to know. Uh, so basically what we're seeing, like I, I feel like it's, it's just going to take a bit. And whenever we do get another huge move that I do anticipate we'll see, once we get that, then it'll be more popular again. The volume is going to skyrocket. We'll probably have a few good days um, or a, I don't know, however long it's going to go, depending on which way, what's the catalyst, right? What the catalyst is for why the stock is going to run, whether they cover a little bit, whether the shorts finally have to cover, whether they get margin calls who knows what will happen but yeah hmm. 
Matt Kramer says, I told you ILUS was a banger. Is that one that we looked at? Let's see what they did today. ILUS. Cash elite. 32% on the day. My goodness. Is this the... I don't know which one this is, but dang. 32%. Not bad. Not bad at all. And run follow for bankruptcy December 2nd. Dang. Uh, so let's go ahead and talk about AMC, see what's going on here. So AMC was not bad at all. Uh, AMC did have a, uh, a day. It was up by 6.89% on the day. In the after hours, up just a tad, plus 0.24%. Uh, uh, the it's currently sitting at $36.87, uh, really not too bad right now. So we'll continue to monitor this for, for a little bit and see where it ends for the day. I really don't see it being too crazy in the after hours um, since it's really not moving crazy amounts right now. GameStop, so GameStop uh, did have a day, it was up 3.51%, end of the day at $164.89, currently up 0.07% in the after hours. Dogecoin looks like it's taking a you know small, oh wait, yeah, here's a more recent run. I'm just trying to see. Uh, the more recent run is right here. We can see they're they're retracing just a tad. They they touched 35 cents, currently at 31 cents, but they're up from 15 cents was the the low after the crazy 72 cent run. Uh, so that's crazy. Bitcoin still teetering on that fifty thousand dollar per Bitcoin mark. Uh, I, I wonder if they're gonna break it. Oh, they did break it for a little bit, and then it, it broke back down. Uh, I had, did have this level of. Oh yeah, we have a level of support right now. So uh, this level of support, I wonder if it's gonna. Hopefully this holds. It seems to be holding pretty well. This has been holding for three days now. Yeah, for three days now. Uh, yeah, about about three days now. And holding strong. Hopefully, it continues to hold. I'm, I'm, I'm bullish for the. I don't have any Bitcoin, but I'm bullish for my Bitcoin people. Are you nervous about your 28 call options? Um, I think all my call options are well in the money. I'm not gonna lie. I, I truly don't look now with call options. I really should be looking. And actually, now that you mention it, I should look into it. But, um, are they? It sounds like you know my call options better than I know my call options. Are they September 28 call options? <laughs> uh, if they're September 28 call options, I feel very good about them. I'm gonna continue to hold them. I'm not gonna like get out or anything. If, even if it dips, like I, I'm just gonna hold my call options. If they're, if they're August call options, I'm gonna have to make a decision here shortly. Uh, I'm gonna have to look into it because I really, I'm, I'm truly, which is bad. I should really be tracking them, but I really haven't been tracking my call options. I've just been waiting, and if I get a notification, then I, I get a notification. Um, not the best way to play call options, in my personal opinion. Uh, do as I say, not as I do. Yikes, Angelina, I'm, I'm mellow right now, but I'm very uh, a little concerned about my call options. I got to see where they are, but I'm, I'm pretty sure they're in the money, so I really feel pretty confident about them. So uh, don't don't let my uh, yikes. We got to see. But uh, let's take a look here. So we were looking at those. Uh, something we haven't taken a look at is Mayrin. So I've been watching Mayrin and seeing what they're gonna do. Oh wait, I was watching Mayrin, but I stopped watching Mayrin because they were heavily shorted. I don't think they're really as heavily shorted anymore. So I think I'm kind of I might actually stop watching this one. M R I N. Yeah, Mayrin. Let me see. Short interest. And so let me compare it to historically what it looked like. Yeah, I'm I think I'm over this one. I think I'm over this one. I'm actually not really gonna watch that anymore. Sorry about it. Carnival's one I've been watching. Carnival's on a, a crazy ride right now. Uh, I, I want to see where, where Carnival is going to go. This is the beginning of the pandemic. They were doing pretty well. They had a small retracement, which I'm super bullish on this retracement right here. They're they're fighting this level of resistance, and I have this green uh, level of uh, or horizontal line for resistance because I think as soon as we break that, it's going to be bullish. But with everything going on with the Delta variant, I'm very oh seven seven. Oh my gosh, Scorpion, you're right. That I do have that one. Man, I need to take a look. September 17th, I'm going to hold it. I'm holding strong. So I'll let you guys know what I do with that one. Dang, I forgot about that. I'm crazy. I put that much money in the freaking stock. 
uh yeah so before the june run-up um diamond before the june run-up oh my gosh i made out like a bandit i had a few of the was it june 18th um 40 dollar uh what, what was the one that everyone was buying the june 18th 40 dollar calls and i bought a bunch i bought a, a good amount of them and oh my gosh i made out like a bandit i also got some some september ones just because i like to play them a little further out uh so i have a, a few different calls kind of staggered and so i'm gonna i'm gonna i'm gonna take a look but uh yeah that i forgot about that september 18th september 17th one that one's probably printing because i got that one super early so i think i did i'm really gonna have to say look i'm so sorry i, I do not know my own positions right now <laughs> Uh, so this is what I'm into. This one is heavily shorted though, right? This one had 26% today. Are you kidding me? I think this one's heavily shorted. Let me let me pull this one up really quick. SPRT. Yeah, this one. Let's take a look at what's going on with SPRT. I believe they were the ones that are super heavily shorted. Whoops, we'll leave the volume here for a second and then we'll look at the short interest has been has been skyrocketing. So this one is super high short interest right here. Utilization, did the utilization change recently? Um, kind of, let me take away this, this short interest. So yeah, utilization over here around uh, 94, it was around 97, 98, down just a little bit, but yeah, this one's heavily shorted right here as well. I had 25, $40 calls. Yeah, see, I mean like, yeah. Uh, home says, Corey, I got one of you. I got one for you since I'm new here. Okay. One free one for you. Box L B O X L. If you play this right, you retire. If I play this right, I'm going to retire on AMC. I'm not lying. I am. I'm not even exaggerating. If I play, if this goes half the way I, I think it's going to go for AMC, I, I will retire in the near future, which is just insane to think about not even half if it goes like a quarter to what i mean an eighth of what i think amc can do like holy smokes uh luke says are you getting any 145s i'm not gonna lie like I'm, I'm, i've kind of held off on options for amc the only reason i held off two reasons i held off on options for amc i'm just holding i'm pausing on options is they're so flipping expensive for the time frame i would want to purchase them personally i like playing them super i mean just extremely safe so like if i were to buy them right now i mean i'd probably get them for october november december i mean at the very very earliest october but even then like october amc calls right here uh if i were to get them actually you know what these aren't too bad so 75 dollars. so if i were to get them all the way out here i mean it'd probably be pretty dang fantastic actually you know what it's just very close is the, on the time frame, but uh, you know, and also so so number one the price because per, personally I would much rather get them for like I don't know November January you know let's look at December really quick see what they look like for the one forty fives okay I mean granted this is a lot of money uh, but no one knows when it's actually going to hit and so if I were to go in on this I throw I don't know thousand dollars into it or something and i mean you know this would really print very quickly if it became in the money right the break even of 146.69 so it would break it it would go in the money very 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 quickly but at the same time you know no one knows what's gonna hit like when it's gonna hit i think like this is probably pretty safe but uh it's just so hard to say and you know, there's how high is it gonna go? People are shilling themselves with their sell limits at $100 and stuff. I mean, uh, a lot of different category factors going into it. So, uh, so there's that. But also, you know, shares. I think shares uh, with going through the proper payment for order flow, right, uh, is very beneficial. So if I were to buy a bunch of shares uh, and proper payment for order flow, that is the that is a good way to do things, right? Get things moving. Uh, granted, you know, my shares that I would purchase would not make a dent, but, you know, I like to think I'm helping. Uh, John says, hey, Corey, uh, did you see here or did you hear they stopped selling fake shares? And also some people have been having a hard time buying shares of AMC. John, I actually I haven't heard that at all yet. Um, that's very interesting. 
very very interesting oh i haven't even looked at your your thing yet box okay b-o-x-l box light parent so let's see what box light parent does what they're doing let's look at their uh when is this from where's the beginning of the pandemic <laughs> yeah let's look at boxel or box l let's see I just totally, honestly, I'm not gonna lie. I was looking at, I was, I meant to pull it up, and I, I legit just went squirrel. Like I just, <laughs> just kind of totally spaced out. But yeah, let's take a look at this really quick, and then we'll finish looking at uh, some of their stuff. Okay, so I like to look when the pandemic hit, right? What what was their low? And around March 18th, if you want to know like how a stock was doing, the only thing here's, I will say this, like. And, and, and granted, I'm going to give you two parts to this. Number one, I will say this. I look at how they were doing pre-pandemic. So pre-pandemic, so mar around March 18th is when I look at for uh, the pandemic. Because March 18th when is about when we shut down the um, the country, whenever we were quarantine mode. So that's pretty much the, all, the low, uh, or around there is going to be the all-time low, right? So for this particular stock, looks like 323, March 23rd of 2020 was the all-time low of, uh, or not all-time low, but more recent low of pandemic time. Uh, and here's where they hit. Now, what I where I get problems with these, yeah, I know, Diamond, I saw your message, uh, where I get um, nervous with these kinds of plays, right? And, and I'll do the disclosure first. Full disclosure, this is how I missed out on GameStop because I was 1 million percent going to invest in it until uh, I looked at like the, the chart of how it was historically, right? And so, what I did here, and I felt like they were oh, there's a few different reasons I didn't get into it, but one of the main, the main reason I did not get into it was because I looked at the historic chart and it was like this for the past, look, this is 2019, like mid 2019. Uh, you know, it just, just wasn't looking so good. Right. And so that's why I missed out on it, but we can see here. Um, and the reason I bring that up is because whenever I look at plays, I kind of look at how it looks, how it looked pre pandemic. So for example, if it was like at, uh, $5 pre pandemic, and then during the pandemic, it like fell, even though it was like on, an, uh, it was climbing pr previously. Then at that point, I I'm like, Oh, you know what? This is probably going to recover like strong. If it does recover, blah, blah, blah. That's, kind of uh, one of the things I've been looking at when picking my stocks. So with this one in particular, we can see it looks like the low was around 33 cents uh, and then it's it's gone upward, right? We can see the trending trending upward is currently at $2.26. Um, and then again, I'm still wishing I could find a way to click here and drag it all the way over here to see the total percentage within this time frame. If anyone has, I will, I will send you a hat. If anyone knows a way to do this, I will send you a freaking hat on how to do that all right i'm i'm not joking i'll send you a hat so anyways so looking pretty good so up about 8.65 percent on the day uh so i'm assuming that and, and again one of the reasons I, I missed out on on gamestop is i didn't know it was heavily shorted i didn't know what was going on but i remember looking at it when it was at three dollars and i was like nah like i don't want this piece of junk <laughs> the joke's on me uh so let's take a look at this because i i assume this is what you're looking at, right? And let's see what we have going on. So short interest and something I've been looking at also is the historic, like where it is historically and historically, you know what? It's uh, this is the pretty high, the highest it's ever been shorted, at least in the last or since September. Can I zoom out here a little bit? 2021, 2020. I mean, I can bring this backwards and stuff and see. So current, yeah. So realistically, it is around the highest it's ever been uh, for the short interest. Um, short interest pretty high. Utilization 78%. Still high. Uh, you know, still very high. Uh, the shares on loan. So let's see what the shares on loan are. Uh, 7.52. We'll just say seven. And let's look how many total shares of the free float there are, okay? And I do this because I like to get a percentage. So, and this is something I'm seeing. So a AMC is 20% of these shares are on loan that are available in the free float, okay? And so we can do this one right here. This was 55 million and there were, I think, seven. So let's call it, let's give it eight, right? Let's give it eight million or eight million shares divided by Dude, I already forgot it. I have the worst short-term memory ever. 55. 
8 divided by 55, right? To give it the benefit of the doubt. Even then, it's 14.5%. We'll, we'll call it 14, 15% sure. Um, which isn't bad. I mean, you know, but the only thing is, I don't know what's going on with the stock. Is there something specific going on that I need to know about? Like uh, a new a new thing? Oh, interactive classrooms. Okay, okay, okay. So I have a few opinions on this because, and, and again, this goes back to kind of my whole pandemic theory. It's really changed my mindset with, with what's going on. For example, Zoom. Um, maybe not Zoom, maybe... Sure. Yeah, yeah. You know what? We'll do Zoom. That, that's an easy one to understand. So Zoom, what happened? What happened at the beginning of the pandemic? Every single company, every person, I thought it was hilarious how everyone just bypassed Skype. Everyone's like, whenever, if I would have thought of what I was going to do to interact virtually, I would have gone straight to, um, uh, to Skype. Like, but Zoom, I came, in my opinion, came out of nowhere, completely took everything by storm, and that was the the standard. So Zoom. So I'd be curious to know, and I really don't know the answer to this. Let's take a look in real time and see uh, what happened, right? Okay, so this is kind of my fear. So Zoom was fantastic. Look, this is mid-pandemic, right? Toward the end of the pandemic, looking pretty solid. And here's the beginning of the pandemic, right? Here's the uh, December, January, you know going up, going up, even on March 18th, like it, it was just solid. And this is a perfect example of a, of an, of a, a stock that is going to do very well in the pandemic. But now guess what? Everyone used zoom. And now what is happening? People are going back into an office. They don't need zoom anymore. So what is going to happen to their business, right? This is what I would personally anticipate is going to happen to their business. It's going to retrace. I don't think it's going to go back to this to 60 bucks. I think it'll probably stay around. I'd probably give it around 200, 300 bucks or something. Um, but I don't think it's going to sustain because sure, some companies are staying at home. Absolutely. But if they can and want and are going to go back to, into the office, then they don't need Zoom anymore. So I don't I don't like Zoom personally for that reason. Right. Um, Boxel is also low flow with the community. It worries me too much. Okay, right. Yeah. See, and there's and there's there's a few different things with with Boxel as well, right? Because for this one right here is online interactive learning. Guess what they just started at the beginning of the pandemic? I'm sure this would have been fantastic. Online interactive solutions. And granted, I only like literally read this a small part of this first sentence, so maybe I'm wrong with this, but it seems pretty self-explanatory. Now, if I'm if I'm right about this and you know they're doing online, let's see. Interactive classroom solutions for global education. Um, flat panels, projectors, whiteboards. Okay, so these are educational things. The thing is, there's, and there's also a whole bunch of companies that do this, like the smart boards and stuff. It seems like they do the smart boards. There's just a few things that I don't particularly care for on this one. Now, I think going back into the classrooms is very interesting, right? Because this kind, I wonder what's going to happen with smart boards and this and that, because if, okay, I got it. Go to chart. All right, Diane, you're up. What you got? I'm going to look at the, uh, when's the pandemic? So this is around the pandemic time. Okay. So let's make, look at that. It skyrocketed in the, during the pandemic and it's been doing pretty well. Uh, I just don't know if it's I don't know what your catalyst, what you're looking at for a catalyst to go, uh, go crazy. But anyways, I, I could, I could keep talking in, in circles and circles, but you, I hope you can understand my, I, I see you, uh, home, um, uh, uh I hope you can see my thought process for like some of these stocks. And you know, when you're making your own picks, uh, maybe that's something you, you might want to consider. You may want to consider, uh, what it looks like whenever we are, you know, post pandemic, pre pandemic going forward. Uh, cause now we're in a, we're in a different ball game, right? Indicators, Fibonacci retracement. Um, I, I mean, you want me to do a Fibonacci at the, like down here at the start of this run right here. Well, if I were to Fibonacci, I, I would, I would do it here. Cause you do it at the, the start of the run to the top of the run. And so we're here. So retracement is pretty solid, right? So uh, well, I, wouldn't, I don't know about solid. It's retraced all the way down here. More recently, I mean, it's it's been in here. Uh, I'm not sure where you want that Fibonacci. Cup and handle. I, I see a cup and handle, but I feel like that handle 
I mean, it's kind of a sloppy handle, but if you if you see that, um, I'm not really too sure. But yeah, so good stuff, good stuff. And you know, I hope I didn't destroy your hopes and dreams. But I just want to give you my perspective on it. And I and again, my favorite. I always say this, but my favorite thing is if you were to say, you know what, uh, Corey, you're wrong. They're doing this, that, and the other. Blah blah blah. No, I love it. You know what I mean. So uh, if you have anything like that. I'm, I'd love, I'd appreciate it because I'm going literally blind. I didn't look at the financials or anything of the company, uh, which the fine, the profit has been a steady increase. Props, institution ownership, 13.90, not too crazy. And all of the uh, price targets are pretty freaking high, pretty bullish. Three times what they currently are now. Start along the high, shows the percentage from time. Yeah, that's Fibonacci retracement for the hat. Wait, what? It it shows the percentage if I go across. Oh, I hate this. No, wait. Oh, Diane, are you about to earn your hat? Seven hundred. Oh, I see. So if it goes, uh, the percentage is right here. See right here, the percentage. I see what you're saying. I hate it so much because I hate saying the word hate. I apologize. But I wish like, so I'm going to put this at a dollar then, you know, right? Make it kind of easy. Sure, around there is about a dollar. So if we go to $2, would it be 100%? Yeah, about, yeah. I see. Dang. All right, Diane. You win. Wow. Yeah, it's not my favorite, but hopefully they, they do that. Did Moto, did Moto call it? Well, I think Diane beat you to it. <laughs> I think Diane was, was explaining it. <laughs> Sorry, Dave. Ooh, John. Okay, thank you, John. Okay, so uh, sorry, just tuning in, but Snonko Tracker says it or is showing no shares left to borrow. Usually happens in the morning, but not the evening. Oh, okay, pretty interesting. Let's take a look really quick, and then we'll, we'll hop into the Ortex data for AMC. Um, Snonko Tracker. Oops, spelled that wrong. We'll go to dark mode so it doesn't break my eyes. All right, so borrowed shares fee and uh, shares available to borrow. Okay, I wonder where this pulls us from. And again, always, you know, and I'm not trying to show anybody, but always with a grain of salt, you know. What's up, PDP? Um, you know, this is interesting. I'm getting different information from like other places. Actually, we're on Fintel. I already have it open. Let's take Fintel, check Fintel. And granted, you know, this is a small, this is not really anything, but let's see what these guys have to say about that um we go to short interest short interest here and we can take a look at what's going on short squeeze score we can see it here and then we can also see yeah shares short availability i wonder if they're pulling from here um for stonko tracker it might be an easy way for them to pull it I'm, I'm really not too sure though but we can see here on ortex that it's a uh, different information let's get that pulled up and see what amc says for ortex See utilization about uh, ninety percent, which is still you know very high. Don't don't get that. Um... Oh Mo oh Moto really did Moto. Okay, uh, <laughs> you got it Moto. Uh, all right, I'll tell you what. Send me, send me. Ooh, Angel crew member for three months. Thank you. Oh Diane. Okay, no worries. Uh, D uh moto can you send me a message on discord with your address and stuff i'll, I'll get it sent out happily all right so let's take a look and i, I apologize moto you're you're right Th diane thank you for for letting me know um let's see 
So let's take a look at AMC. So AMC shares on loan, again, around the same, uh, 106 million uh, utilization, 90.19. Uh, and then the short interest of the free float, uh, just under 18%, right? So it is what it is, looking pretty solid. Uh, I'm not going to harp on these numbers too much. We know that we've seen the direction, the correlation, and I'm, I'm good with it. So let's also take a look at Ortex. So Ortex had some pretty interesting updates today. So my favorite one, obviously, being right here. AMC share price is up over 8.5% today, generating losses of $270 million dollars for short sellers so far today. Uh, granted, it did not end at 8.85%, but uh, even then, I mean, I'm sure there were some, some substantial losses, which I love to see for the short sellers. Uh, sorry about it. It's a, it's a vicious world out there in the world of stocks. Looks like um, Jared says AQST. Oh, before I go to AQST, Jared, let me take a look at something really quick. One other thing I wanted to see was the institution ownership for AMC. I want to see if there was any big changes that happened recently. Uh, I've just been kind of watching it, and you know, you never know what you're going to see, so bear with me here. But uh, we can see 13F Morgan Stanley right here. Morgan Stanley uh, bought 12 or 12 uh, 1, 1.2 million shares. Uh, 1.2 million shares. 13FA, 13F is the whenever you, you file to do it, right? Quarterly report that is required to be filed with at least 100 million assets disclosing. Yeah, looks like they, they added to their position, right? Why don't they have shares changed and stuff though? Can anyone confirm this for me? I, I, just, I just don't want to say the wrong thing because I see 13F, a, which is what they have to they have to file to disclose their equity holdings. I love how it says uh, it discloses their equity holdings and can provide insights into what the smart money is doing in the market. The smart money. Wow. Uh, either way, so let's go ahead and continue here. So, I mean, all these shares, like all these people are opening shares and, you know, they don't have the price here, though. Hmm. I'm not sure about this one, but look, these guys, look at these guys right here. They bought 22,000 shares at 56 bucks. It's so funny how people are continuing to, uh, they're buying guys. Like if you it, just based on this, these people are buying these shares at these prices, uh, these are way higher than the apes got in. Most of the apes at least got in. Uh, I'm bullish. I'm so bullish. All right, let me take a look at that one for Jared. AQST. Let's see what they're doing. Oh, ST. Aquestive Therapeutics. I don't mind being dumb money because I have dumb money after the MOAS. Hey, I see you, Matt. Yeah, yeah, and that's why I did emphasize that because it's like, are you kidding me? Like, what smart money is doing in the market? I mean, it's, I don't know. There's just something about that. These guys have so much money. It's like they're they're statistically playing the market. If you have a billion, a trillion dollars, right? If you have a trillion dollars, you're telling me that, the, the stock market typically, right? What are the chances that with a trillion dollars, if you diversify, you know, uh, 3% in each little market, like what are the chances that you're actually going to lose money on companies that are doing stocks that are, you know, probably successful, this and that, what are the chances that you're going to be negative? Like, you know what I mean? It's, it's, there's a statistic number in there that people, I don't really are taking into account, uh, I don't know. There's there's something in there. I don't really know how to articulate it, but I'm sure there's a very I don't know. There's some, there's something there. I, I just don't know how to properly articulate what I'm trying to say. But let's take a look at that stock really quick. Therapeutics. I do like therapeutics. Uh, I think they have huge runs and huge drops if they're not doing so well. What's up, Mike? Hello, peeps. What's up, Carnival? Man, I, you know I'm, get, I'm getting a little nervous about cruises. We'll talk about that in just a sec, Mike. Let me look at this stock really quick. AQST, so here is, oh, okay, so here's the whole stock right here, so it's kind of been, 
uh, pretty volatile, I'll say. Let's look at the, okay, you can get options in here. So these guys are doing, the company's focused on developing and commercializing differentiated products which leverage farm film. It's late stage product pipeline focused on the treatment of central nervous system or CNS diseases and early, earlier stages or earlier stage pipeline, including treatment of anaphylaxis. Oh, how do you treat anaphylaxis? Like if you have an allergy, you're going to go into anaphylactic shock. Like you, you don't go into anaphylactic shock or do I not know what anaphylaxis is? Am I, am I mistaken? Let me pull this website really quick. Oops. Oops. All right. So this is this. See our pipelines. So I guess these are the things that are going on in here. So here are all of the, wow, they have a lot going on. So anaphylaxis, severe allergy medicine. Yes, yeah, severe allergy. Okay, okay. Uh, a severe potentially life threatening allergic reaction. This is whenever people have the EpiPens and stuff that they, they stab themselves or whatever, or whoever would stab them. And, and, and this way they don't, you know, die. Uh, epinephrine yeah i mean I, I don't know how you would treat that is that like like zyrtec or something like an allergy pill that you would take i'm curious how that actually would work but we can see here the ep epinephrine is what they're working on now so we're in phase one two and three and these kinds of and this kind of stuff i'll tell you people can literally there was somebody a, a successful youtuber i had found a while ago and they actually only trade pharma stocks they claim to be very successful you know i, I can't verify but um I've seen these kinds of stocks run a lot of times whenever we have, I didn't even look at the tops of the day yet. We'll go back to that. But looking at the tops of the day, like sometimes you have these stocks right here, they're up a hundred percent, 200%. And some of these things are really trying to cure like literally cancer, cure like all of these very serious things. I mean, this is, this is literally could save lives. Like, uh, I don't know how it would work. I guess it would have to be, I wonder if it would be for people who have like, uh, very common things like maybe i don't know maybe peanut butter if that's in a lot of stuff or like like serious nut allergies are super dangerous i'm sure um i don't know what else it would be but and how exactly it would work i have so many different questions but we'll, we'll go ahead and continue on from from that maybe somebody could think of some better things uh diazepam so this one is breakthrough seizures cluster seizures which you know filed marketed so we can see here a lot of things are successful um <laughs> uh complex yeah so this these are getting close so i don't know i don't know too too much about this stuff financials if there i will say though if there was one industry i i just don't I, it'd be so hard for me to get into it would be those not because i don't i'm not passionate about it not because i think it's amazing what they're doing but just because there are so many different and i'm obviously not educated in that medical field uh if you have a friend that's in the medical field that is like a pharmacist or something up to date on what's going on what's coming out what's not coming out what might work what might not work uh that could be a great person to talk to and kind of partner with on some of these uh these things but i wouldn't even know where to find i, I don't even know how to find some of these plays it goes it goes all over see yeah uh, there we go matt thank you thank you for the example and that's rough i'm sorry to hear this but uh, my daughter is definitely allergic to milk and eggs uh, the worst part about it is the cost of the EpiPen, right? And the cost, for those of you who don't know, uh, I was fortunate enough. Um, so I was doing allergy treatment. Like I went to a place and they would like, they check my allergies like on your, on your forearm and stuff. And they would say, uh, um, they say, okay, you're allergic to this. You're not allergic to that. And then I, uh, would go in and they would give me a shot and they would monitor me and you know they would help my me be less allergic. So I had to have a an EpiPen with me at all times whenever I would go in there. And uh, they said, and oh the EpiPen was gonna if I didn't have insurance, the EpiPen was a thousand dollars. 
a thousand dollars if I didn't have my EpiPen. And so luckily, like I said, my insurance covered it, but holy smokes, I can't even imagine. That's ridiculous. It's insane, but yeah, uh, crazy stuff. Sort of, oh, okay, Laura says, AQST is making a strip like Listerine for people when they go into, oh, when they go anaphylactic? Oh, okay, into anaphylaxis. Interesting. Huh, okay. Yeah, see, and this is, this is again, why I, I, I'm just not, this is not for me. I'm I'm not the I'm not the the that guy. Uh, profit is so hard to look at when you're looking at pharma because this changes so quickly. I'm sure with the amount that they charge for these freaking things, like the EpiPen, is ridiculous. But we'll continue here. I'll tell you what. Uh, while I kind of rag on these institutions and stuff, and whenever so many people are invested in them, uh, there's no way it's like. You know, I feel pretty safe about these these kinds of plays whenever, you know, and granted, this one's 43 percent. So it's like obviously medium. But uh, if they have 80, 90 percent institutional ownership, I feel pretty good about them. But even then, you have to keep in mind, those plays are not always the highest plays. Like so those plays can be, uh, you know, 10 percent a year, 5 percent a year or something. They're not in They're They're realistically in it to maintain their wealth and slowly gain more wealth. They don't need the risk because they're already wealthy. And we can see the the price targets for analysts are just insane. So, you know, again, just so that's what we have here. Realistically, the, his, the history of the chart kind of doesn't matter. Like, because with this kind of thing, it's not about how, in my opinion, this is my personal opinion. Like, with this kind of stuff, like, I don't think it, the the chart, even the chart setup really matters because if they're going to have a successful drug that is going to fix anaphylaxis or make it super, you know, easy if someone were to go into shock or, you know, go into anaphylaxis, then it's going to skyrocket. You know what I mean? Like it's going to be a great product, especially if doctors like endorse it and stuff. But for these kinds of plays, I really, I personally just feel like it's a buy the, buy the hype, sell the news type of thing, which is a traditional kind of stock thing that people say. And uh, if that's the case, you know, probably hop out whenever they, I would personally just hop out whenever they do the news and then just let it die down. Maybe hop back in if I think another news thing is going to happen. But uh, these are kind of get in, get out kind of plays, in my opinion. Okay, let's look for the tops of the day and then we'll uh, see what else is going on. Oh, wow. Sorry to hear that, uh, Angelina. What's up, Macamania? All right, tops for the day. Let's see who's doing the tops for the one day here. We can see Trillium. What do these guys do? Trillium. Therapy. Is that supposed to be therapy? Immuno oncology therapy. So this is this is the kind of stuff that I'm talking about. Look at look at look at the the top right, 188 percent change. I don't know where that's coming from because I'm not seeing that in the chart reflecting at all. One day. Oh, is this a reverse split or something? Three to one. Two or one to four. Yeah, I'm not sure what's happening here. I'm gonna just continue on. Let's see what else, if there's anything I recognize here. Support over here with the 26% on the day, not bad. A lot of pharma. If you guys notice, the tops of the days, they have a lot of pharma all the, a lot of time. Romeo Power, somebody was talking about Romeo Power previously. Let's look at the top losers for the one day as well. Flora growth. I think these guys have previously had a run and they've been falling. Airspan. All right. Nope, not that. We wanted to delete it. We're going to switch back to the recent viewed. 
AQST. Are there options you can get for AQST? Okay. So I see somebody wants the AQST over here. Who said that? Lamar says, might grab some calls on AQST. 20 to $30 price target. Jeez. Are you going to get it for like February? Well, you can't. I don't think you can get it that high. Looks like you can get $10 for November. It's going to be cheap. Call single. Man, this is a lot of money to be made here. Whew, that's crazy. Um, ILUS, what's up, Ziptic? Uh, I think we already talked about that one. I'll take a quick look again. ILUS, they had a quick 32. Yeah, somebody was talking about it in here earlier. Dang, I can't even remember who was talking about it. Was it Matt? We'll look at the six month. Uh, so a huge run here, 32%. What do you guys do again? Cyclical consumer products, home building and construction supplies. Okay, so here's the deal. I will say this. If you don't know what's going on with um, home building and stuff like that, man, I don't know how I know this stuff. I just, I just, I don't know. But anyways, uh, I well, actually, there's, we co-office with, um, another company and this other company does and I'm trying to become super jerky today. Why is somebody texting me today? All right. Um, I forgot my train of thought. Oh, so home construction supplies and stuff. Okay. So here we go. I'm sorry. Somebody keeps texting me. It's very distracting. So, okay. So with homes and stuff, right? Construction supplies, apparently the price of wood and this and that went up because of, I guess there's a shortage. There's not maybe logistics issues. Who knows? I don't know what the heck is going on. All these people trying to build homes and stuff. There's so much going on. So this kind of run, I don't know what exactly specifically what they're doing. However, I do think that these guys kind of like, the service, I do get concerned of, oh, wait, is this the E-Raptor people? Oh, we did look at this company. Yes, we did look at this company. This is the one with the, the different stuff. The E-Raptor they have. Here it is, the E-Raptor. Yes, yes, yes. So we looked at this. So there's some very interesting things that they're they're. Brainiac switching gear so fast. I know it's just so much stuff going on. Uh, yeah, so they have some very interesting things. So they have these for agriculture and uh, uh, whatever else you would want to use these for. These are electric, kind of like little tow trucks or whatever, from my, from my understanding of them. And the back actually goes up, and this back kind of like dumps, right? It turns into like a dump truck. And this goes this goes up, and then it kind of drops whatever's in there. Uh, so they have these things, which are pretty neat. Uh, they also have FB Technologies. Which one's this? Firebug. I think Firebug was the one that's pretty interesting that I did not think of a good uh, use for it, but the chat did have a fantastic uses for them, uh, and which was the firefighting, right? Firefighting. These, uh, I guess they have the hoses or whatever that consume, like, I think it's up to 80% less water, and the 80% less water, uh, I was like, I don't understand the benefit of it because this is what I had said. I'll tell you what they said. I don't understand the benefit of it because if you are, if I'm fighting a fire, I just want the most water. I, I just want it to be done, like, efficiently and freaking rapidly with as much water as it needs. I'm not trying to conserve water if I don't need to, you know, and I know how that sounds, but just imagine your house is on fire. You're like, well, I'm not concerned about conserving water. I want to save my house. So, uh, but people said like other countries, other countries don't have that kind of luxury where it's like unlimited supply, you know, unlimited supply of water. So, you know, this would be very beneficial if they have to use a, whatever they would have to use. So these kinds of things could be fantastic for, for other stuff. And here it is, this one right here, 65 more, 65% 65 more efficient water consumption with improved firefighting. So not only does it have uh, better, no, these do not drive themselves. <laughs> Good question, Angelina. Uh, so fantastic. Um, 
thing here, right? So if it's not only is it 60, about 65 more percent more efficient in water consumption, but if it fights fires better than a regular hose while saving water, where you'd want to use this instead, then that's fantastic, right? And I guess you attach it to the back or unless, oh, this is probably oxygen. So this is probably the hose for that. I don't know if it goes to this truck, which is where the water comes from. Uh, so obviously I, I'm not an expert at this, but here's the mist max, mask, max, uh, and yeah, so interesting stuff. And you know, I will say uh, with these kinds of things, I actually, uh, in, in a previous life, I was actually going to trade shows and at trade shows, uh, I worked for this company and we would, uh, show police software. So I would go, it was in Louisiana. I would go to these Louisiana police trade shows with all of the chiefs of all of the, uh, 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 police stations you know the police chiefs and they would all be there you'd call hey chief how's it going hey chief that's how you would address everybody it was very cool um and they would come and they would say hey what are you, what are you selling what do you got and they would say i have a budget i need to use it i don't want to have a surplus i don't want to have you know i don't want to get a lesser budget and if you know about budgets you know how that goes um and I mean, you, they could buy anything. They could buy, literally, they could buy new cars. They could buy dogs. They could buy lights for their cars. They could buy software. They could buy this. They could buy that. They could buy anything they wanted, and they had they wanted to use their budget, and they, you know, whatever. They, they could buy guns or, you know, weapons, I should say. Whatever they wanted to buy with their budget, if there was anything that appealed to them. And this kind of stuff, if they get it to a trade show or wherever they need to get it to, and people say, you know what, this is better for this and that and that, blah, 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 could be, could be cool stuff. Now, I don't know what they're really trying to push. They could be trying to push a bunch of different stuff. Maybe they, maybe some of them go together. You know, this one's kind of by itself. But if like this emergency services goes with the fire bug, you know, that we just saw and the vehicle con converter, I don't know what this does. I guess I'll open this last one too. Hey, Chief Rodriguez. Uh, see these emergency vehicles? I don't know if these are electric vehicle converters. Oh, I guess they take vehicles and they convert them into whatever they would need to be an ambulance, fire truck, uh, whatever this thing is. So I guess that's a whole business they have. And this one, BCD fire, I guess just fire alarm systems, it says, commercial kitchen systems. So a bunch of different stuff. So fire safety stuff. I really can't tell you if they're good, if they're bad, if people like them, where they're located. It looks like they're all over the place. I don't know if they're in America or, or you know, this looks like the Middle East or something. I'm uh, not really not sure where they would be, but, you know, some if you want to invest, obviously, you, you have to do your own research. But Franken beans. Uh, just just my two cents on something I'm really very limited uh limitedly educated on limited i have li i have limited education on slide to the left that's not the electric slide whoops uh so yeah but that's kind of everything i wanted to talk about guys i really enjoyed talking about these other stocks uh if you guys have any stocks that you guys want to talk about tomorrow i would freaking love to do it it sounds like so much fun i'll read ziptic's message and we'll probably like wrap up ziptic says the main thing about ilus will be is uh Main thing is ILUS will be cutting their outstanding shares by half within a week or two. Hopefully that's the real kicker. Cutting their their outstanding shares. Uh, okay, so I wonder what that would do with the stock. I, I'm, I'm really not too sure what that would do to the stock, but uh, Lee says, I think I, I, uh, Diane, I'll have to check. Who is messaging me? Uh, I'll have to check. Of course, set the merch. Um, Bambino. I gotta get you some merch, man. Maybe, you know, send, send me a message in Discord. I, I got you. We'll, fi we'll figure something out. Send me a, a direct message in Discord. Uh, all right, y'all. I'm gonna go ahead and wrap it up there. Thank you guys so much for sure. Double the price. Yeah, Ziptic. So theoretically, right, it would double the price, but will it? Uh, I hope it does. I hope you freaking get paid very handsomely. But is it, for me, this would be have to be a, kind of a case study. Like, what what does happen? Like, um, we'll have to see. But 
yeah well, i'm gonna go ahead and wrap it up there guys i hope i i really like talking about stocks tomorrow let's do the same thing let's talk about some stocks your favorite we'll kind of go in and out uh, maybe i'll find some that i like don't like and uh shoot holes through your, your favorite stocks and stuff like that but uh yeah so i'll catch y'all later you guys have a fantastic night all right peace